I'll share assets if you want. All righty. Well, welcome everyone. Sorry about the uh, technical delays, but I'm glad that you are all here. Um, so today I wanted to give a presentation on a brief guide to computer science at St. Cloud State. Uh, there's a lot of um, different uh, semi-related majors in computer science. Um, so that's not just going to be the, uh, the topic for today, but uh, I really want to give this talk just to kind of give a bit of a background information on the various different degrees, clubs, all that. So um, first off, who am I? Uh, my name is John. Uh, I transferred here last fall. Um, I originally did my associate's uh, computer science degree from Rochester Community Technical College. Um, and I'm the vice president of the computer science club. Uh, I was originally a computer science major um, when I initially transferred here. Uh, last spring, I changed that to a software engineering major. So I have a couple of uh, different uh, programs I have experience with. Um, what are we going to talk about? Well, that's relatively simple, it's right here. Um, I want to talk about a few different degrees that are related to the computer uh, science degree, uh, as well as um, the many different student organizations, some tips for success, uh, and then we'll wrap it all up. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start by talking about the degrees, the computer science degree to start with. Um, so, I mean, what what is the uh, computer science degree really focused on? Uh, it's giving you a big, broad idea of uh, a bunch of different programming concepts. Um, so what is the degree going to consist of? Well, you've got kind of two core classes, uh, computer science one and computer science two. Now, these classes are going to be like the most important ones you're going to do here, and possibly the only ones that like ultimately really matter because in those two classes you're going to focus on learning all of the concepts that you're going to need as a program um, now you're not going to have experience with all the different uh, programming languages and you're not going to um, necessarily delve real deep into them but if you master all the concepts that are presented in uh, cs1 and cs2 uh, you will uh, you'll be really well set up uh, to move forward as a programmer so besides kind of those two core classes, uh, there are a bunch of specific just topic focused classes. Um, that's really what this degree feels like a lot of. Um, it's it's really focusing on different like concepts. Uh, so for example, uh, software systems was of course I took last fall, and it's really about like how does uh, the software, um, how can we efficiently store information onto uh, the hard drive. And how can we efficiently uh, access it, that information? So I mean, things like uh, what what type of methods do we use to store information on a hard drive? Do we store it as like a plain text document? Do we uh, use some sort of encryption? Um, all that stuff, as well as uh, like how do we access it? I mean, how do we pull something off of a disk and have it be as quick as possible? I mean, what if we have like a hundred gigabytes of data? How do we efficiently grab that? Because pulling things off of the disk is really slow. Um, so it's it's all about that uh, that how do we store things and access them from a disk? And you'll find this with a lot of the classes. Um, when you are taking them, it'll just be a relatively narrow concept and um, everything about it, really. And one thing which I noticed with software systems, uh, it doesn't really uh, necessarily directly translate to anything you're going to be doing. Like we talked a lot about different ways to uh, access stuff, or sorry, to save stuff to a disk. Um, a lot of different methods of, uh, you know, putting information on there. And you're never going to have to use those. Because someone really, really smart has already made, you know, a really great algorithm for how to store things and pull them off of a disk. Our big uh, semester project was um, creating a B plus tree, which is basically the back end of a database. But you're never going to have to do that because someone really smart has already uh, made a far more efficient database than you're going to be able to work on. But that being said, I mean, it's not directly applicable to what you're going to be doing, but it's really about getting that, uh, that concept, you know, understanding the concept to a level where uh, hopefully in the future, 
um, you could potentially do research and you know work on improving that uh, database algorithm or whatnot. Um, that's really the uh, the type of classes you can expect uh, in this degree. Um, there's also the kind of weird computer architecture. Uh, this is focused on um, most of you probably haven't done discrete math, uh, but uh, there's this thing called truth tables. Um, and it's basically trying to say, okay, if we have, you know, uh, if these two things are true, then we're going to say this is false. If this one thing is true and this is false, we'll say this third thing is false, et cetera. Um, we're going to use a whole bunch of uh, logic gates, uh, so and, or, not, um, and we're going to have to try and solve little problems. You know, how do we uh, press an elevator button and get that to move the floor as well? You do that in a in computer architecture. So it's a really kind of unique, strange uh, little tangent in the in the degree program. And uh, 320 especially is very well known for uh, people's struggle with it. Um, it is a difficult class. So uh, that one's kind of weird. But for the most part, the rest, except for your math courses, communications, etc., uh, will be these specific topics posed in this class. Um, like I kind of mentioned already, the degree, more theory, less application. All right, so software engineering. Um, so this is a degree that's focused on the software engineering process. So that's not talking about programming. That's talking about how we go from a no piece of software to a completed piece of software. How do we figure out what we need to do, gather the requirements for it? How do we turn those into a uh, you know, design? Um, how do we take that design and the program? So the entire uh, process of start to finish is really what this degree is focused on. Now, again, we have the core classes, uh, you know, computer science one, computer science two, um, that's where you get your programming knowledge, uh, the core of that. Then we have introduction to software engineer, uh, SC240. Um, this is sort of an overview of the entire uh, program. Like it really touches on pretty much every concept you're going to uh, learn about the software engineering process throughout the degree, just in, in a very shallow manner. Uh, but definitely, um, like if you don't like this course, uh, if you end up, you know, trying the uh, software engineering degree, if you don't like 240, then you probably aren't going to like the degree. If you do like it, then this might be a good place for you. Um, outside of the uh, uh, core class of intro to software engineering, we yet have a few of the uh, specific topic focused class. Uh, like we have one um, operating systems and applications, which has a very uh, similar one in the computer science program as well. Uh, really just talking about, you know, how do these things work? Uh, how does the operating system communicate with the hardware? And how does, you know, your compiled code do anything? Um, but the majority of the, uh, the majors classes are going to be software engineering classes. So we've got uh, like uh, SE 460 software analysis. Um, this course is dedicated to one thing, getting the requirements for a program. So you have a, a business process, say someone wants uh, to order pizza, but they don't want to walk into a store and do it. Uh, you have to analyze that. You have to look at what they're doing. You have to figure out how software can make that better, like by making an online ordering system. Uh, and then you need to uh, get all of the requirements for that online ordering system and put them into the format that your programmers are going to be able to understand. Um, this actually, uh, a number of the things which are studied in software engineering aren't just uh, applicable to like programmers. Uh, they'd be applicable to like project managers uh, as well, because those are really the people who would be gathering all the requirements and then going, okay, here's what I need you guys to program. Um, but we have a lot of different uh, classes focused on um, the software engineering process. And you don't really do much programming. Um, well, much learning about programming at least. Uh, traditionally, almost every software engineering class as a, a semester long group project. Now, we don't really learn much of coding beyond CS201 and 301. 
So they're like, make us an online ordering system. And we're like, I have no idea how to do that. I've coded in C++. Um, so it's a little bit of they're, current, they're pretty reasonable about their expectations. But, uh, okay. Can, can you kill the sound? Good Lord. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, You'll get a lot of experience creating uh, projects um, which you might not have actually gotten in the uh, computer science degree uh, because you're asked to make, you know, a functioning piece of software which uh, could be, you know, something you see out there in the world. Um, a lot of the projects, you know, aren't polished like you would see, you know, some piece of software which was produced professionally. But uh, you're actually having to learn to use a variety of different languages and tools uh, on your own. Uh, to solve the problems. So, uh, I mean, this degree is really working as a program, not how to pro, uh, working as a programmer, not how to program. All right, uh, cybersecurity. Um, so, uh, this and uh, information systems, I have a little bit less experience with, uh, so I might talk a little bit broader, but, um, you know, focus on how to identify and prevent security. Is, uh, is the main idea. Now, you've got your core programming classes. You've got CS, CI 201, and then you have uh, the, um, the beginner uh, programming course of their own, uh, their own version, 267 and 268. Um, it seems to be, uh, you said it was in Python? Yeah. Okay. Um, so probably just an alternative ish to uh, the 301 requirement for uh, computer science. Um, this, this program is... 301 is in Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, uh, this program has generally less to do with coding. It, there, there are some classes which will have more uh, coding than others, but, um, you know, big topics that this program talk about, like security theory, uh, how do computers work and how do breaches happen? So you'll look at like a network um, or you know operating systems, and what are the kind of attacks that happen uh, against those systems? Um, and so you'll have classes which talk mainly about like uh, theory. Um, you also get some experience with penetration testing. Uh, so skills for how to breach a system. Uh, I was a member of the uh, organization OWASP. Uh, a little bit last semester, Open Web Application Security Project. Um, and one thing we did was uh, called the Capture the Flag uh, game. Basically, you uh, connected into a remote server and you had to try and navigate your way through that server following a few instructions to try and find uh, information um, which was stored on that. So it's kind of, uh, I mean, whether it's uh, connecting into a server via SSL like I did, and then uh, and then using command line to communicate and navigate through the file structure and whatnot, and try and find something, or uh, whether you're like sending uh, HTTP requests uh, to a website and trying to like inject your own code into that website or something, like uh, you know you'll learn uh, several different methods of penetration uh, testing. Um, I know some people who have. Uh, actually gotten some freelance work as uh, white hat hackers. Um, so that, that's definitely a skill which uh, you'll at least do some work with in this program. Um, additionally, like prevention and mitigation techniques, uh, ways to prevent and deal with breaches. Uh, so how do you uh, successfully set up a firewall to uh, protect your network? Um, how do you identify when your network has been breached and how can you uh, you know, track where they went and track who it was who kind of traded your network. Um, so you'll learn a variety of different things like that uh, as well. I mean, this degree is really like the system security is the first and foremost thing. So you'll be in a, doing a variety of things, like I said, console, uh, navigation through a uh, network, HTTP requests, uh, whatnot. Um, 
and as well as using like software like a firewall. The coding uh, is really secondary. There are some people who, you know, do code as uh, cybersecurity experts, but um, it's generally less common. Uh, it's more uh, about your ability to utilize um, these, these various methods, your ability to uh, test for penetration and to prevent uh, breaches. So uh, information systems. Um, so this is a uh, degree that's kind of removed from ours. It's actually in the uh, Herberger uh, Business School. Um, but it's focused on how to manage information systems for an organization. So uh, managing um, databases or uh, I guess it's even a little bit broader than that. I mean, really anything to do with IT. Um, the degree consists of a bunch of business and accounting classes. It is in the business school. Um, so they require all of their standard classes as well as a few additional for the, uh, um, for the major, um, less for the minor. Uh, also a lot of management classes. Um, and this, you're really learning how to uh, be part of the management of the organization and then address the various IT needs of your organization. And you also have some uh, information systems classes. Uh, which will both focus on um, sort of the systems, which you'll be uh, dealing with. So like, what are the different types of databases? How can you, uh, you know, best choose the right one for your company? How can you decide on a, uh, you know, how did Noodles and Company decide to use the Aloha um, system for their uh, registers? Like, someone with an information systems degree probably uh, made that decision based on a number of factors. So. You'll be looking at that um, at the various systems, but also uh, with a business focus. So, you know, making all of these decisions in the lens of, well, what's going to be best for the business? Um, how can I determine that? Um, I mean, this degree is really, so you want to be a chief information officer. Like, you want to be the guy in charge of uh, all of the uh, technology at an organization. Um, obviously, there are a lot of lower, uh, lower level positions you can also get with this degree. But um, just looking at the uh, various classes and whatnot, that's really what this degree seems to uh, want to point you towards. All right. So we've talked about uh, you know, a few of the different degree paths. Um, so there are a bunch of related student organizations here on campus, which you can take part in. Uh, now, obviously, Computer Science Club, welcome everyone. Um, <laughs> we meet at uh, 3 p.m. on Wednesdays, and uh, we also have our own Discord server. Um, but overall, uh, we're really, uh, we try and have presentations like this sort of uh, every other week or so. And then on the off weeks, we just have a uh, more casual, um, get together. I mean, people come in and we talk about homework or anime or whatever. Uh, and uh, the officers also will do some work during that time as far as organizing various things for the club. So it's also a good opportunity for you to uh, get some input into the club as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so definitely you've already found us. Uh, we hope you'll stick with us. Um, but the Student Organization of Software Engineers uh, so this is the uh, basically a software engineering equivalent of the computer science club. Uh, we're relatively similar. They uh, have meetings every other week um, is their plan for this semester. And I have not gotten information yet on when their meetings are going to be. Um, but if you're interested in joining that organization, which I highly recommend, um, I was a part of it last semester, um, definitely uh, go ahead and uh, go to Huskies Connect and uh, add their organization on there. Wait, so that they pretty much like just your presentation? Um, yeah, they are. Uh, well, it was a variety of things. Um, occasionally it would be like uh, they would do like a presentation on GitHub or something. Uh, last year they brought in a number of different uh, companies to speak. Um, and we're actually uh, bringing in a company um, later this month. But uh, and then there was a bunch of uh, social time. Uh, they had a room, um, pretty nice room actually, where they would just hang out and people would come and go. 
I don't think that's quite the same this semester, but um, hopefully next semester that'll be back. But yeah, uh, relatively similar to the uh, to the computer science club, just a slightly different group of people. Um, so uh, we also have the uh, Cybersecurity Information Assurance Club, uh, CSIA. Uh, they are meeting at 5.30 p.m. Uh, bi-weekly on Mondays, starting on uh, the 14th. And they really focus on all of the uh, cybersecurity stuff. So uh, the president, uh, I spoke with her the other day, and she was uh, saying that they're going to focus first on a upcoming certification for cybersecurity. Um, there are not, and cybersecurity is not just about the degree. There are a lot of certifications that test your uh, knowledge in various areas, uh, as well as your competence. Um, so uh, those matter a lot. So you know they focus on helping their uh, members pass those certifications. They also compete. Uh, I know they've won prizes before uh, at um, various uh, cybersecurity competitions. Um, so if you are at all interested in cybersecurity, in white hat hacking, or uh, anything like that, I definitely recommend checking them out. Um, and that time uh, might change. Uh, they have a membership form, which they would like you to fill out if you're interested. And uh, if it doesn't work for a bunch of people, then, you know, they'll move it and find a better time. So um, Information Systems Club. Uh, they focus a lot on the business aspect, uh, just like their degree. Um, from what I can tell, they do a lot of uh, networking and uh, bringing employers in, resume reviews, a lot of things like that. Um, so definitely, uh, if you're interested in uh, information systems, good place to check it out. Uh, Girls Who Code, um, dedicated to helping uh, women succeed in you know, computer science, software engineering, as programmers. Um, really cool organization. Uh, got a chance to talk with the president. Uh, really excited uh, to hopefully see them thrive this year. And uh, it can be a different, a bit different atmosphere, um, I think, if you want to uh, join that in addition or instead of um, one of the uh, other programming clubs. And finally, uh, but not least, the Video Game Development Club. Um, they did a game jam actually last spring. Uh, I think like four of them from the club and they actually got a prize for most growth uh, in the game jam. But um, really, it was pretty much founded last spring. Uh, it had sort of existed before then, but not much. Everything got interrupted by COVID but uh, really trying to focus on creating um, video games to build people's portfolios if they're interested in potentially trying to go into that field as a profession or as a hobby, um, just trying to help people out. And they're not exclusive to uh, like developers. Um, if you want to design or model or um, create sounds or write, you know, any of that stuff, uh, any of that stuff works. So. They also have a Discord, which I've linked. Um, we'll have this posted somewhere uh, after the presentation. I'm not sure yet where we can post it. Might just be an email, but it'll be there for you. All right. So, a uh, bunch of different organizations, a bunch of degrees, but uh, just some basic tips for success um, in most all these degrees. So pay attention to the early classes in your major. So CS201, 301, uh, SE240, um, CNA267, you know, uh, well, A, like information that you'll need later. The stuff you're taught in CS201 and 301, you're going to need so much throughout your entire time if you're a computer science major. Um, but it's not going to get retaught. Like, they might briefly touch on something, but they'll be like, oh, I expect you learned uh, linked lists in, you know, 301, and that'll be it. Um, <laughs> so uh, they, they generally don't go back over a ton of that information. So, uh, you know, pay a lot of attention. You may need it later. But even more importantly is how you feel about the field. Like if you try uh, SE240 and it, 
you love it, then software engineering is probably a good fit for you. If you take that class and you hate it, then probably not. Um, it's a really good indicator of the rest of the degree. Um, and uh, my uncle also, uh, when I was considering going into computer science, I was like, well, you know, how do you know that you'll enjoy programming as a career? And he was like, well, uh, pay attention to your programming classes. Like if you are okay, or if you enjoy, um, you know, programming some project that you're told to do with an arbitrary deadline, like you're probably going to enjoy the field. Uh, if you absolutely hate it though, I mean, that's going to be a lot of your professional life. Like you're going to have projects given to you and you're just going to have to do them. Um, so kind of pay attention to how you're feeling during it. Uh, and, you know, maybe make a decision about your major based on uh, if you absolutely cannot stand what you're doing. And I mean, that's a little different than like if the teacher is terrible or something and you hate the class because of that. Uh, that's a different story than like, I hate to do the projects, but uh, you know, kind of pay attention to that. Um, and I mean, if you know, one of these majors doesn't feel right, like uh, that's one of the reasons I included uh, information systems. Like it is still tech related, but uh, it's a very different degree um, than these other ones. Uh, so if you don't end up thinking that programming is right for me, but you do, uh, have an interest in business and uh, management and you think you might want to explore that direction, well, uh, then you could try out the information systems or, or look into that. Um, but second big tip, connect with other students in your major. Uh, so obviously homework studying, uh, that can be really helpful. Like if you don't get a concept, um, I find it a lot better as far as like concepts um, to be able to talk it over with someone as opposed to like just trying to Google it. I mean, it's it, like there are some things which Google is great for, uh, but you know, just being able to explain something, I like in person for that. Um, and uh, we actually had a, a study group last semester for computer arch or two semesters ago, I guess, uh, for computer architecture. Um, didn't end up needing it too much, um, but it was still a good experience. Um, learned a fair amount and met some really awesome people. So, but in addition to that, um, job connections. If you know someone who graduates a year before you, chances are before you're out of school, you'll now know someone who has a job with a company that you might wanna work for. Um, and same is true for internships. Uh, like being able to uh, get a feel for different uh, employers, like from a firsthand experience of someone you know, uh, that's really useful. As well as like, oh God, I need a, I, I need a job or I need an internship. Um, being able to have that person there who can vouch for you, uh, pretty useful. Um, I've definitely had increased interest from a couple of employers because of my connections there. Um, and I mean, another thing is like, learn about the teachers. Not all teachers are created equal. Um, <laughs> there are some that uh, are better than others. And you don't necessarily want to put yourself through a semester of a ton of stress and tank your GPA if you don't have to. So being able to like get to know people, um, especially like people in uh, older years, uh, in the major is really useful for being able to, you know, choose your classes wisely, choose the things that are going to uh, allow you to succeed uh, as much as possible. Um, so then, uh, obviously, uh, as the vice president of the club, I'm going to say this, but uh, get involved in student organizations. Um, not only does it help you connect with other students in your major, but employers love uh, to see student organizations on your resume. Um, they like it even more, uh, a lot more, if they see a uh, leadership role there. So if you have any interest in an organization, um, I'd recommend that you try it out and see if you find a fit there. And if you do, um, 
try sticking around and maybe even try for a leadership position. It's a little bit more work, uh, but there are usually a decent number of positions which don't require a ton from you, uh, maybe an hour a week, and look that much better on a resume. Um, they show that you can lead, that you can work with people, all that stuff. So definitely uh, get involved there. Um, and I think that it, you know, increases your quality of campus life. Um, that one's less scientific, but uh, still good. All right. And then finally, internships, early and often. Uh, each internship you have is another employer that you vetted. You can be like, oh, this employer is great. I would love to work here. Or no, I, I don't like that place. And if you're at least decent, you basically have, uh, with most employers, some employers not so much, but uh, if you've interned there and you were decent, you basically have a guaranteed job if you want. So like, do internships, try and get an internship as soon as possible. Uh, you may not succeed um, the first year you try. Like I have an associates um, already and I tried this last summer and I didn't get one. Now things were maybe a little weird last summer, but uh, you know, it's, it's better to try as early as possible. And uh, you know, the more, uh, the more you get, the more people you've vetted, the more experience you have on your resume, and the more experience you have at interviewing and actually working in the field. So like, it's gonna be really, really useful for you um, to try and do that early. And one thing of note, recruiting happens in the fall. So most employers uh, I've seen tend to have applications that open September or August timeframe uh, for the following summer internships um, and then close late, uh, mid, late October, maybe November. Um, that's a lot of employers. Even those who don't close at that time, who leave it like open for a long time, often they uh, do, a, do rounds of interviews earlier. So if you wait later, you have less of a chance of getting an internship. So like, uh, you know, if you're a freshman, maybe you decide you don't want to try this year. But like, as a junior, I would definitely uh, recommend everyone should be try to get an internship. You know, utilize the first, uh, the first few weeks of school and get your resume working. There, there are a number of different workshops. Uh, one of them happened earlier today. There's a resume review coming up, I think next week. Um, so like, take advantage of those things to get ready for the internship and then just uh, apply. Apply at all the places and maybe you'll get it. Um, so definitely really, really helpful. Uh, I cannot recommend that one enough. So yeah, um, so are there any questions on any of that? I know that was a lot of stuff in a relatively short time, uh, but I wanna answer any of your guys' questions about any of the degrees or clubs or anything that I can. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys do during the um, So uh, we're looking at, every other week trying to have some sort of a presentation thing, sort of like this, variety of different topics. Um, but uh, on the off weeks, uh, I mean, the officers talk a lot of shop. Uh, we also, you know, we've helped out each other with like homework and uh, looked at like personal product projects and we've talked anime and we've done a whole bunch of different uh, stuff on the uh, like more casual things. So, um, it's kind of there to uh, have that social aspect as well as to let the uh, let the officers and those who are interested in uh, kind of the decision making have a specific time uh, to kind of make sure that the club is going to continue to function. Cool. Any other questions? Where is the resume review? Where is it on? Um, Oh, so the, uh, this resume review is going to be uh, online only. Uh, so you'll register for a slot on Handshake, and then I assume it will be through Zoom. Uh, but they'll give you the information on how to uh, connect. And then you'll, I assume, half hour time slots, uh, probably. 
um, but you'll get like a time slot where you're meeting with one of the employers. Are you trying to cater your resume for every internship you're thinking about, or just have like one that you for all of them? Um, resume, I generally uh. I generally have one, um, one like solid one. Now, if you're applying for jobs which are pretty different from each other, um, like if you're trying to apply for like a programming internship and a uh, cybersecurity internship, like I might try two different resumes for like different fields, um, because that way you can focus on sort of the things they care about. Like uh, the cybersecurity internship probably doesn't care too much about all of the uh, programming languages and frameworks I've used. Um, they care more about those certifications, which the programming one doesn't really care about. Um, so that's the only time when I would think about having multiple, really. Cool. Uh, any questions from Zoom? Oh, we have one here as well. Good. Cool. Event. Um, so yeah, uh, upcoming events. So as far as our events, uh, September 23rd, I didn't find a different speaker yet. So I will again be talking um, GitHub and you. I see a lot of computer science students who don't know what GitHub is. And even those who do, uh, a lot of them don't use it. And it's bad. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to talk about uh, what it is, why I will judge you if you don't use it, and how to use it. Um, <laughs> September 30th, we're going to have a local company, Geocom. Uh, they're going to come in. Uh, they actually recently became a partner um, with Amazon's web services. So uh, they're going to be talking about um, using those Amazon web services uh, in their discussion. And also just, uh, you know, they will uh, be on as an employer. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, uh, they'll be joining via Zoom. Uh, we will also have like a watch uh, in this room if you want to. Um, otherwise, you can always join me uh, via the normal Zoom link for that. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely a good way to connect with a local employer that does do uh, internships. Um, October, uh, we don't have the date quite set yet. Uh, we're looking at towards the uh, second half of October, um, but we have a hackathon. Uh, so a hackathon is an event where, um, you know, variable length of time, but usually it's uh, 24 hours or 48 hours. Uh, we're gonna do ours for 24 hours, uh, where you and a few other people uh, try to create a uh, solution to a problem. Um, in our case, uh, the prompts is going to be connect. Uh, you know, every day we connect with uh, other people and with technology. Um, how can you create something that helps us to connect? Uh, which I think is even more important in our current world. Um, but uh, how can you create something to help us to connect? Uh, so 24 hours to work with your team to create the best thing possible. Um, we give out prizes, we have a uh, few companies judging, there'll be free t-shirts for everyone. Uh, so this was originally going to happen in March, or was it March? It was it March. April? 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 I don't know, sometime last spring, <laughs> it was all blur. Um, uh, it was gonna happen last spring, but uh, and it was going to be face-to-face. Postponed, um, so we will be re rescheduling that for uh, towards the second half of October. Uh, stay tuned for a date for that. But really great experience to put on your resume, um, get some experience just uh, throwing something together. Um, and other events, uh, not ours. Uh, resume reviews, September sixteenth, uh, like we talked about. Just sign up on Handshake, and it'll be uh, remote. Um, a number of different uh, um, programming uh, companies are going to be doing resume reviews. So that's a good one uh, to submit your resume for. Um, October 7th, uh, there will be the virtual COSI Job and Internship Fair from 12 to 3. Uh, the COSI Job and Internship Fair 
has traditionally been pretty great uh, for connecting with employers and finding internships or jobs when you're leaving. So uh, definitely recommend that. Even if you don't even get an interview, uh, still a good experience to interact with employers and you know hand them resumes and, and get comfortable with that type of interaction. Wait, at that point, you think it's too late though to get an internship on October 7th? Uh, no, usually it's like, a, I think a week or two after the uh, job and internship fair, I think most of the uh, employers, uh, one to three weeks after, uh, most of the employers close their applications. So at that point, you can still uh, generally apply for the internships. Um, and some of them, a lot of them have you apply on their website in addition to handing them uh, your resume. Uh, some of them don't. Um, but yeah. Uh, any other questions about the events? Cool. Um, we hope that you will join us for our weekly meetings. Uh, like I said, 3 p.m. Wednesdays, uh, right here in this room, ECC 117, or uh, via the Zoom link. And presentations will be about every other week. Uh, obviously, with like an employer coming in, that might it goofed up, but we'll have casual gatherings uh, on all the uh, off weeks. So, um, with that being said, thank yes. you so much for attending. We have a question. Oh, yeah. So, the question is how much guidance is there for those who want to learn more about computer science, even if it is in their intended major? Yeah. So, well, I mean, first off, like everything I've learned here. I could have learned from Google. Um, I mean, I'm personally here for the structure. Uh, that forces me to learn, and I pay a lot of money for that to force me to learn. But um, so, uh, like, it depends. Uh, we're not necessarily going to give a lot of uh, introductory information. Um, if you want to, uh, learn, uh, like I said, pretty much all the basics of programming, uh, 201 and 301 um, would be your best bets. But uh, even without them, uh, if you're self-motivated, like you can get a lot of, uh, you can get all the information about uh, coding online. Um, I, think, I think really just uh, this club will give you what you, you know, ask from it. So if you want, uh, you know, help with mastering concepts on coding and during those like casual weeks when we're not necessarily doing a lot of stuff, uh, you know, people are going to be fine with that, I would think. Uh, like anyone who knows how to code will probably be right there with a, oh, hey, yeah, I can help you. And some of it might be kind of confusing and there might be three people talking at once, but, uh, you know, people will help out. Uh, <laughs> so, I guess uh, as far as structure, um, structure guidance, uh, you know, it's it's what you're gonna ask from it. So we'll we'll be here as much as we can. Uh, I just don't have the ability to throw together like a full course or something. So uh, we'll we'll help out, you know, in whatever ad hoc ways we can. Yeah. Yeah, and lastly, thank you guys for joining in and just keep the dates on mind, September 23rd and hackathon. I mean, all, all projects that I want to raise in your hackathon. So they really look for it because it just shows you on that small amount of time that you created something else that was out of your boundary at least. So there are a lot of cybersecurity majors, software engineering, IS, uh, computer science during that. But yeah. Thank you guys for joining in. Um, stay tuned. Connect with us on Huskies Connect so you can receive emails, or we'll be sending it through Cliff usually, so you guys will also receive more emails. Are we only going to email full PowerPoint? Um, yeah, yeah. How we will. You know. All right, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, um, we're supposed to do something in the easy 68 thing, whatever. 